Labels are signifiers. You create them using at, so you can do at new at this week. And filters are queries, almost like a search function in Excel or a, a SQL query. Here's a quick video on how to think about labels and filters in Todoist so that we can prioritize our tasks at the end of our weekly review. And just to recap what I shared with you earlier, this is how I deal with it in things where my today view represents my, my uh, tasks that I've selected to do that week. Things with deadlines will also show up here, but I use them very sparingly. And then the tasks that I really want to get done that week, like most of the time I won't do everything I've selected here. A lot of tasks they'll churn and then I'll, I'll clear them in my next weekly review or something. But the ones I really want to get done, I'll label as high. So we're going to reproduce the exact same thing in Todoist using filters and, and labels. And so first, just to understand the, the Todoist ontology, labels are signifiers. You create them using at, so you can do at new at this week. And filters are queries, almost like a search function in Excel or a, a SQL query. They have their own syntax and they allow you to do kind of interesting things as your task database grows. It allows you to like filter out certain tasks based on how you like to do your work. So this is a, a really cool use case. For instance, you can see all the tasks that are due in the next seven days and are as labeled as waiting. And then it creates a, a little filter for you to apply on your, your database of tasks. So we're going to use both to prioritize our, our weekly tasks. And I'll just cut straight to the chase. You're going to have these two, I don't want to use the same word as filter, but these two ways of selecting out your tasks for the week. So Anything that you'd really like to get done that week, you just label as at this week, but then a subset of those are very important. You know, it's like my high label, you label those as P2. So Todoist also has the priority label. So label those as P2. I, I would save P1 for like really, really important things. And then you also have some things that have due dates and those can be added as well. And then when you're working, you, let's say you only want to see the ones that have been labeled as P2 and have a due date, you can use this filter. And the filter is P2 and at this week, line break, I don't know what this is called, today. So this means an or, and you can, I'll just copy this into the email. But this allows you to get a quick heads up display of what's most important. And you'll know that if you just click this filter, you're gonna see things that are due today. You're gonna see things that you really wanna do this week. And then if you go here, you're just gonna see things that are labeled at this week. There's a few more ways to play with this. I might even create one that is at this week and at today so that the, those that you forgot to label as this week, but you gave yourself a deadline for will also show up. I think that would actually be wise. And then on top of that, you have like a, a priority filter today. will also just always handle things that are due that day. So these are the deadlines, but the whole idea here is we have more ways of prioritizing instead of using deadlines, which should be used very, very sparingly. They should be things that are like deadlines should feel basically inviolable to you. And all these other forms of filtration should be more negotiable. That's, that's the way that, that I think about it. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions about that. I actually kind of prefer to do its handling of this, even though there's a few more steps and it's slightly less elegant. I think it allows you to create something more personal and, uh, and accurate. So. So I think this will be perfect for this final step of indicating your priorities for the week.